Welcome again. I think we have a fairly good dependency injection container already. We can add service, we can automatically fetch dependencies, and we can register singletons. We also have a fairly good test suite. Right now, I think it's time for us to organize those tasks and now also organize our container class a little bit. As we progress towards what we have right now, we've made some not so good code decisions and there are things that we can clean up a little bit. The good thing is we do have a fairly good test suite so we can ensure that things are not going to break. Let's start by running all of our tasks so they're passing. And I already see that PHP Storm is complaining about this. Let's see what it says. Whoops. Okay, it's complaining that we need to add some uh, throws blocks. We don't actually need those on the task, so let's skip it like this. Going through the class, one of the first things that I see is that the singleton method expects a closure as a callback, and the register method expects mixed as value. So while here we can pass any primitive, here we must pass a closure, which makes sense. If we are registering a singleton, we are expected to pass a closure. With that said, we could make things a little bit easier on the developer experience side. For example, on Laravel, you can do things like, assuming you are inside a, a service provider, you can do things like you can bind a service and then you can either pass a closure like we were doing, or you can pass a fully qualified namespace. For example, like this. And Laravel will automatically, you know, fix it for you. It will treat it as a closure internally but you don't have to pass it. You can just do it like this. This is a good opportunity to also task that we can bind an implementation to an interface. And you guys are going to see how those things are going to be tangled together a little bit. So let's come here and add two tasks. So we're going to go with, we want to task a can bind implementations to interfaces. All right, let's come here and we're going to create an interface called my interface and then we're going to create a class called my implementation which implements my interface cool and it's also going to be empty and then we're going to call we're going to create a class called my implementation user those are terrible names which is going to have a constructor that expects an instance of my interface like this so we want to test that we're able to register something to this interface and then instantiate this my implementation user class. All right, let's come here. So the first thing we want to test is that we can bind implementations to interface. Let's add void here. Oops, I was supposed to add a column here. So we have our container, right? We want to say something like this container and we want to say register. So for the key, we want to pass the interface. Remember when we say something like this, we are actually passing a fully qualified namespace, right? So we want to say this, and then we want to bind it to my implementation. Then we want to assert that when we fetch my interface from the container, we're getting an instance of my implementation. So we expect an instance of my implementation, and we're going to say container, please get my interface. Let's run our tests and it is not passing. What's happening is we're getting a string. Remember, we're passing a string as the second argument. And right here, we expect a mixed value. So we're just binding that interface to a string. We're getting a string. What we need to do now is check if the value we're getting is a class. And if it is a class, we can just say, mm, okay. So what the user meant was actually to register a new instance of the class. So for example, we can do something like the value, or rather, let's put this in an if block. If a class with the name of the value exists, and it means the class exists so we can instantiate it, then we can say that this value is a closure, as we would expect for actual objects that returns that value. So we can say something like this. Let's see if that works. Let's limit it to this task for now. Okay, so this one's passing. We broke our test suite though. So let's pick one of those. Line 30, let's go to line 30 and see what's happening. In this case, we can do something like, if it's a string and if the class exists, then we can assume it was meant to be an object and we can create our own closure. Let's run our test suite. 
Okay, now we're back to green. So we already handle that syntax trigger. Now we can pass mixed here and it will work. We can copy this task and create the same task, but for single tasks. So test, it can um, bind implementations to interfaces as single tense. Let's go with that. We can paste this and we want to replace this with singleton. So let's run our test suite. It's breaking because we're expecting a closure, but we're getting a string. So we can also change this. And since this is just an alias to this method and we already handle it here, we should be fine. Let's run it. Okay, pretty cool. We got that working. So now we can buy things to interfaces. All right, this actually looks pretty fine to me. One thing that we do have to think about is what if we try to resolve an interface? That's a situation that we haven't thought of. So let's write a test real quick saying test, it throws an exception if it tries to instantiate an interface. And for now, let's just see what happens. So let's say that we want to get my interface that isn't bound in the container. So we don't have a concrete implementation for that. The container will try to resolve an interface and obviously you cannot resolve an interface or an abstract class. Let's run our tests. So could not resolve class exception. That looks fine, but I think we can be a little bit more specific. So let's go with something like, we're going to expect an exception called could not resolve, or rather, let's go with something else. We're gonna expect an exception called could not resolve abstraction. Something like that. Let's create that class. It's going to be add container. Cool. So we want this to extend runtime exception. That's it. And we expect the exception message to be could not resolve interface or abstract class. And we can pass the name here. So just to give some, some more context on the error, let's run our tests. It's going to fail because that's not what we are resolving. So what we can do here is so let's go to our container. So we have the reflector right here, right? And we're getting the constructor, yada, yada, yada. What we can do right here is something like reflector. We have a method call is instantiatable. So we can use that. And if the class cannot be instantiated, then this is not going to work. We cannot resolve its constructor. We can do anything with it because we can't instantiate it. And the whole purpose of the container is to give you an object. So if we cannot instantiate it, then we can throw the exception. So we can say throw neo could not resolve abstraction or something like that. And the message was could not resolve interface or abstract class. So let's do a sprint f to keep this readable and we can pass the class name. So we have it as service, right? Okay, so here's the problem. We're getting to this line right here. Let's run our tasks. Actually, we only want to run this one. So let's filter. We are right here. And if we run class exists on the service on an interface, we get a false. So a way we can do this is we can remove this if block. We can remove this exception and we can deal with that on the build method. So if we run our tasks, now we got a failure, right? Because, um, we're, we still haven't fixed that, but we can go right here. I'm sorry, I, I just got a little bit confused. So the task that we were running is now passing, but now we got a failure because we removed the line that threw an exception, this line right here. So another task is failing, right? So what we can do is inside this right here, this throws an exception, a reflection exception. So we can add a trade catch block. We want to catch a reflection exception and then if we catch a reflection exception, it means we could not resolve the class and then we can throw the could not resolve class exception. So let's run our task. Now we're back to green. So now we can give the user um, a better error when we try to resolve an interface or an abstract class. And we can also use data providers for this task. So we can replace this uh, when it tries to instantiate an abstraction, for example, and we can add a data provider right here. So we want to say data provider, abstraction, error provider. Let's go with that. We want to add a public static function called abstraction, error provider, which is going to return an array. And here we can return our task cases. So on the first one, we're going to pass my interface. And for the second one, we're going to pass my abstract, which we haven't created yet. 
So let's just add this as an argument. We expect a string with abstraction, and then we can obviously replace this with the abstraction. Rather, let's also put this on a sprint path, pass this in, as an argument, and we obviously want to replace this with this variable, this argument. So let's create this class at the bottom. It was called abstract class my and it's empty. So let's run our tasks now. Okay. And now we have 16 tasks instead of 15, which means that we're now running two sets of data for this task. So if I were to, for some reason, come here and switch this for as interface, now we got a failing task because we are not handling abstract classes. All right, another thing that we can change is since we defer this to a build method when a service is not bound to the container, we can also extract this and we can say something like return this fetch bound service. So if we have a service, we can fetch what has been registered. We need to be protected. Let's paste, it, paste this. Okay, we need to format this. So let me run pint. All right. So pretty standard. We're checking if we have something on the cache, if it's a singleton. If it's not, we're fetching the service. We are executing the closure, if it is a closure. And if we need to cache it, that is, if it's supposed to be a singleton, then we add it to the cache. And then we re return the resolved service. So now this get method is a little, a little bit cleaner. So let's run this. Okay. The return of this is mixed as well, since it could be an object or it could be a string or an integer. Let's see if we're missing return types anywhere. No, I think we're good. And then PHP Storm is complaining about the name of the parameter since we're following an interface. So I'm just going to change this to AT once again, just to follow the interface and don't have PHP Storm complain about it. Let's run a test. They're still passing. So I would say this is a little bit cleaner now. We can, you know, just through a glance, know what it does. So if we have it on the container, we fetch the bound service. If we don't have it, we build the object we're looking for. And we extract the deck to this protected method. Or if we have to build it, we use this method. To wrap it up, we are missing one thing in this container. For example, we have this user class, which uses the ORM, right? If we were to bound this class to the container, we would have to manually instantiate this ORM class. Let me show you what I mean. Let's create one more task. It's going to be called task. It allows closures to access the container. More of all, for example, you can do things like, let's register a service. It is going to be called user and we're going to pass a closure. So we could just return a new user, right? But then this user has a constructor. It requires an ORM. So on Laravel specifically, this closure receives an argument, a parameter called app or whatever you want to call it, but it's an instance of the container. So you could do something like, and get the, the object you're looking for. So in this case, the ORM, or even something that's bound in the container. You could also do that. But the point is, you should be able to use to leverage the container within the closure. So let, let, let's not change anything here. Let's keep it like this. Let's write a task so it starts failing. And then what do we want to do is we want to assert it is an instance of user, and we're going to fetch it from the container. We're going to fetch the user. And then we also want to assert that the user's ORM is an instance of ORM. Now, the reason I didn't pass the fully qualified namespace here is because this task could get flaky since we don't, we don't have anything bound to the container. We use the fully qualified namespace to automatically resolve a class. So if for some reason we were to use the fully qualified namespace here, and then we were to make this register function not do anything, this task would pass because we would automatically resolve those dependencies using what we implemented, the build method. So let's use an arbitrary string here. Let's run our tests. It's obviously failing since we're missing something in the constructor. So what we could do is we could pass a container as an argument. Let's call it container. 
and then here you could resolve your ORM class. And this is something that could be bound in the container, or maybe you want to use another component that in other module registers, you can do lots of things in real world situations. But for this task, we just wanna fetch something from the container. Let's run our test again. Still failing because we're not passing any arguments to disclosure. So also an easy fix. The place where we resolve the closure is right here. So all we need to do is pass an instance of the container to this closure. Let's run this. All right, let's take a look. 145, return value must be of type array, non-return, oh, my bad, this is supposed to be void. Okay, so now our tests are passing. Just to be clear, what we're doing is, if the service that we meant to resolve is a closure, that is, if it's returning an object, because we do this, remember that when we register something right here, if it is a string, and it also is the fully qualified namespace for a class, we turn that into a closure. And then right here, if it is a closure, then we pass the container as an argument. All right, let's run our test once again. It's all passing, so we're good on that front. And just to show you guys something, we could also, instead of ask for a fully qualified namespace, we could ask for something that has been registered within the container as well. So you could register this ORM, such as ORM, and this is going to return a new instance of ORM, right? And we could replace this with ORM and it should still work. Let's see. And it still works. So we can confirm that we are actually getting something from the container using the obviously get method. This is pretty clear. But remember, if it is bound, we fetch the bound service. If it isn't, we build it. And for example, we're returning an ORM, right? But I could return something, you know, something dumb. I can return some, a string. And this task is going to fail because the constructor expects an instance of ORM and we bound this arbitrary string. And remember the fully qualified namespaces are also arbitrary strings. So I could replace this with the fully qualified namespace and the container would fetch this. It would give you a string, but this would obviously fail because the constructor expects an instance of ORM. So same thing. Let's revert back to what we had. There we go. And we still have our test suite passing. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know on the comments if you have any questions, any suggestions, any kind of video you would like to watch on this channel. I highly appreciate everyone's support and I see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.